Hi, good morning. Uh, good Thursday morning. I uh, had a little bit of rain yesterday. Hopefully it's not as rainy today so that I can go out and do my bike ride. But I want to begin with a little devotion this morning. It's based on our gospel lesson. Now our gospel this week, we follow... Oh, sorry, forgive me. We follow uh, Mark's gospel in chapter 3. We find uh, Jesus who had called his 12 disciples and has been doing some pr pretty ama amazing miracles. He, as we heard last week on the Sabbath, he uh, healed a man who had a withered hand. Uh, and he was showing that it's not so much about the laws, but about caring for people that he came. And then this week we hear Jesus, who is uh, kind of being accosted and followed by large crowds, give a parable. And that parable is one that is not exactly what you would expect. And um, I'm going to share with you the parable that he reads. You'll be hearing again this weekend. But also a reminder of what that means for what God has done for us in Jesus. So it begins in uh, Mark tw 3, verses 20 through 35. Then he went home, and the crowd again gathered, so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and the prince of, by the prince of demons he cast out demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself... And is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then he indeed may plunder his house. <laughs> Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man, and whoever blasphemes they whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will has, never has forgiveness, but he is guilty of an eternal sin. For they were saying he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called to him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Here ends the word of the Lord. Now what I want to focus on here is the parable that he teaches, because there was a lot of... Uh, of fighting amongst those who are there, thinking that he must be Beelzebub, he must be a demon. And if that's the case, and he's casting out demons and he is a demon, then it kind of is, he's against himself. Now, that brings up some kind of strange analogies here. You know, we you would know that uh, a baseball team that would be divided against itself, the Orioles are playing to defeat the Orioles, how is that gonna work out? Or you look at our nation that is very divided, uh, very polarized, uh, it, it can't stand like that. We need to be a people united. A house, a family cannot stand divided, where they're actually opposing themselves over and over again. And you can't, you still find this in the church. We aren't meant to be divided, but to be united together. Oh, it's been some long days, I apologize. But here Jesus wants them to understand that they're calling him Beelzebub. They're calling him a demon, that he must be cast out demons because he himself is a demon. He's like, no, you're losing this. And then he tells this parable that helps to explain what his purpose, what his role is. And it might sound kind of strange, but understand, as he says, if Satan has rose up against him, then he is valid and no one can stand. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds a strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Well, this is one of those unique parables where Jesus is applying to himself. Well, all parables, Jesus applies to himself or to God, but he's applying to himself in a way that you wouldn't normally expect. You see, the strong man's house here is the world that has been corrupted by sin, that is under the control of Satan. I mean, God has won the victory. He has a new heaven, new earth in store for us. But this world in which we live is not what God had desired. It's been tainted by sin, by original sin. Each and every one of us, we are divided amongst ourselves. And the nation is polarized. I mean, you look around, it's things are not as they should be. And so even the strong man's house, how do you then come and plunder that strong man's goods? Those things that seem to be possessed by him. Well, first you have to bind the strong man. And indeed, then you can plunder his house. Now, this is, of course, focus on Jesus. And now he would go to battle against that tempter, that deceiver, the ancient serpent, the devil. Oh, he would battle him all right. Battled him throughout his 33 years of ministry as he came in the strong man's house, living in this world, 
facing all sorts of opposition from people, from his own people, from followers, facing temptation after temptation, as we know, after he was baptized and led out of the wilderness. Oh, he faced all sorts of battles, spiritual battles, physical battles. And yet he knew the only way to do it was to bind that strong man. So he comes and he binds Satan. He takes him on, ultimately, on the cross. And on the cross, our Savior gives his life. And that giving of life is what causes the strong man, the deceiver, Satan, to be defeated, to be bound. And now our Lord is able to plunder those things that, belong, that, that are in the house of the strong man. He's able to redeem those people who were enslaved by sin, by death, and living under the power of the devil. He is able to restore us back again where we were at that original creation, before sin and death tainted the world. You see, in this parable, although it seems very odd in a way of looking at it this way, Jesus describes that he is not in league with the demons, but he has come to oppose them, to destroy them. He is entering the strong man's house, so he might bind that strong man, so he might bind the devil. Revelation gives us an image of this, casting him into the sea. And so doing, he does it so he might plunder you and me, so he might rescue us from the devil's clutches, so he might redeem us and give us life, raising us back to life. He says his parable is one that tells us about what Jesus has done for you and for me. And that's why the next phrase is regarding sin and forgiveness. All of our sins, us who have been captive in the devil's house, captive under sin and death, now they are forgiven. But there is one sin that cannot be forgiven. The rejection of the Holy Spirit, the blasphemies, the, the casting out of the Holy Spirit. And so we know those who are rejecting, rebelling against the Holy Spirit, those are the ones who, when the, when the, when the Lord comes to you know, redeem us and rescue us out of the strong man's house, out of the devil's clutches, the ones who blaspheme against, they're the ones who want to stay. No, no, we're, we're good. We don't, we don't want to be rescued. We don't want that salvation that you want to give us freely as a gift. We'll, we'll remain here. And so they stay lost in that strong man's house, thinking that that is the way of life or happiness. Uh, those things the world might portray today is what, you know, kind of get our desires going. And yet our Savior comes and helps us to realize the deceptions that those are. He sends to rescue us from the lies of the deceiver, from the lies of the devil. He comes to bind the devil through his death upon the cross. Where the devil thought he won, no, he lost. The sacrifice of God's son covers all of our sins. Every single one, no matter how horrible or how, how many sins we have, they are fully covered completely by Jesus. And because he forgives all of our sins, the devil has no claim on us any longer. So he binds the devil in this parable, and he releases us from that bondage. He redeems us. These are the words that we often use. You, When you redeem someone, when you pay that ransom price, you're recognizing that they were, you know, kidnapped. They were not held on their own will, so they are now being rescued and restored by our Savior. And so when we look at this, we say, well, then how do we live in this world? What ties us? Do we stay tied because of our biological connections? Well, no. And that's why when Jesus, they say, yeah, your mother and brothers are out here looking for us. Yeah. Who's my brother, mother and brother and sister? It's those who do the will of God. You see, he gives us a very different perspective on family, very different perspective of how we're supposed to look at one another in this world, not through the eyes of how the world portrays it, not in what we think life is, because the deceiver's done good in, in deceiving us. He's held us captive, kidnapped, in bondage for far too long. Now, Jesus gives us a, a new way of looking at things, a way that points to the cross and the empty tomb, a way that points to our our redemption, our salvation. And so as we hear this parable, all it might seem kind of strange uh, as Jesus doing all these, these uh, miracles, healing people, calling his disciples. He realizes that there's a, a division among the people, thinking that he himself is divided. He's not. He knows what his plan is. He knows what he has to do to accomplish to save the world. He has to take away the 
the powers the devil has over us, the consequences of our sins need to be washed away, need to be atoned for, which he does by shedding his blood. He needs to come and to destroy the power of death in our lives, which he does through the cross. And he needs to come and rescue us from the one who has held us captive by the elemental spirits of this world. So as you hear this text, as you think about your life, recognize that Jesus is the one who redeemed you, the one who uh, has paid the ransom price to give you and bring you back to God, to bring you back to true life. Let's close this time in prayer if we can. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we thank you for the blessing that you've given to us of life in our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you that he followed the path all the way to the cross so you might truly take away all the powers of the deceiver and ransom us from his clutches. Help us, Lord, to live with that truth, with that joy each day and to share it with others who are still held in, those, in, in, in that state, knowing that the Redeemer has come, the Redeemer has saved. Bless us, Lord, and equip us to share that message with others so they too might find themselves no longer under the clutches of Satan, no longer deceived by the ways of this world, but living freely, freely as your children, not burdened by sins, not worried about death, but knowing what you have in store for us in our Savior Jesus. Bless us, Lord, today and every day in his name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me on this uh, early, early early morning. Hopefully it gets a little bit drier out there. Uh, keep bending your prayers as he came back from Ocean City, had a wonderful time, and he heads up to uh, to uh, Wisconsin to take care of some business up there before he comes back, and then we all head to uh, California for a wedding. Also, keep a little Jack Barker in your prayers as uh, he is back in the hospital and uh, dealing with a, another bout of croup. Uh, may the Lord bring upon him healing and bring peace to his family who are so worried about him number of prayer requests, but uh, above all, know who you are and whose you are. Know how you have been redeemed, how you have been uh, bought back with the ransom price of God's own son, so that you would no longer fear the devil, your captor, but you would know the freedom you have in Jesus. Have a great day in the Lord. Know that I love you and aloha.